So, so I'm a, a bit surprised to see you here again, Brady. I thought we discussed this two years ago. <laughs> Is that your time travel joke? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's before the announcement of the event, right? All so, right. <laughs> <laughs> which, the announcement was last week. Well, something really amazing has happened, basically, because uh, scientists at, at CERN and in Italy have found that there's a neutrino, which is a certain type of particle that's actually broken the speed limit. It's gone faster than light. The terrible jokes are coming because of this uh, recent uh, announcement from this group of experimentalists based in Italy at the Gran Sasso Laboratory, who've been doing this exper an experiment for the past three years uh, where they are looking at uh, neutrinos flying from, uh, being produced in CERN, near Geneva, flying through the Italian Alps and, and landing, uh, going straight through the detectors at Gran Sasso, but some of them are interacting with the detectors. And so they've got a good idea of what time that neutrino left CERN, and of course they detect at what time it arrived in Gran Sasso. And they know the distance between the two, so they just, from that, they can work out the speed of these things. And they worked out the speed and they found out that uh, it was slightly greater than the speed of light. Not by very much. Um, if you, the deviation from the speed of light, so if I say, uh, take the velocity of the neutrinos, subtract from it the velocity of light, and divide by the velocity of light so it's got no, no dimensions, that number's 10 to the minus five. So it's one part in 100,000. So it sounds negligible and everybody should say, well, Okay, so it is the speed of light then, but they, they, they believe their statistics are so good that um, it could well be that it's a real effect. I mean, you just think how fast these things are going, right? So they're going so quickly to notice any time difference at all. You know, you've got to sort of have them travel over a very large distance. So, I mean, the, these things are only, you know, I think it's, they've arrived 60 nanoseconds faster than light would have done. Okay, so that's a tiny, 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 tiny time scale, and yet they still travelled over 730 kilometres. To be fair to the experimentalists, they themselves are sceptical. I think that you can tell by the fact that the, the way they've announced the results, the, the, the paper that they've put out on the archive for everyone to see, they openly say, this is strange, we don't understand why it's, this result is there, but we've tried everything we can to account for all the errors that might bring it back within the speed of light so that the neutrinos are going at the speed of light or slightly less and they can't find any reason why they are. Okay so I guess most people's first impression is that you know th this is this is almost too incredible to be true and certainly that's that's probably true of most scientists but of course you know if something happens we, ha we have to look into it um, and actually look very closely at, at what's gone on. One of the, the first thing you might say is have they got say the distance between the source and the detector right have they measured it correctly um, but they've used very sophisticated GPS, that kind of thing, and it seems that they can get the distance right to within 20 centimetres. So this really, and taking into account the Earth's rotation, taking, taking into account sort of, you know, movement of the Earth's crust, all this kind of thing, you know, all this has gone into it to work out this distance very, very, very precisely. And actually, the consensus does seem to be that the distance calculation is, is right, that there's, there's really nothing wrong there. There's slightly more... There's, there's many more concerns really uh, regarding the, the time. Okay, so again, they have to measure the, the time of departure and the time of arrival, and they have to measure it very accurately. Now, they claim they can get the, the time of flight accurate to within about 10 nanoseconds, and given that the time difference is 60 nanoseconds, they're like, okay, that's good enough. And so they've basically put it out to the community. They've pleaded for another experiment to be done. And uh, as it happens, there are two experiments that could be done to test this. Uh, both also firing neutrinos long distances and that's I suppose the plan now that these two experiments will which are already underway will 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 try and home in on this uh, particular result. Let's just, let's, let's just assume it's true right I mean it's more exciting if it is right so what's going on okay well you've got to really understand sort of quite how groundbreaking this is now you know in Einstein's relativity the speed of light is the, is the maximum speed that you know, any normal particle can go at. You, know, you, you can't accelerate beyond the speed of light. And the reason you can't is as you, as you approach the speed of light, uh, your mass becomes infinite, and so you, know, you need an infinite amount of energy to go beyond that speed. That's true of most particles. Right? There is a certain type of particle 
which can go beyond the speed of light. It's, it's called a tachyon, you may have heard that word sort of touted around in the last week. Uh, basically, this is a particle whose, whose mass is actually imaginary. So if it's got imaginary mass, that means that like an imaginary number is something like the square root of minus one or the square root of minus two. So this is, this is a mass, which is the square root of something negative. So these are very peculiar particles. In any sort of quantum theory, we normally associate them with, with horrendous instability. So we, 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 rule, we, you know, we, we don't like them. But if, you prepare, if you're prepared to accept that, that they might exist, then they would travel faster than light, but with very profound consequences, actually. Um, one of the consequences is that you could potentially go send signals back in time. So one possibility is that it's a tachyon and that you can send signals back in time and that you can kill your grandfather before you were born and all, before he was born, you know, and all those paradoxes associated with that. The other possibility, of course, is, is other exotic things, that there's no such exotic idea of time travel or anything like that, but perhaps this is this neutrino is passing through an extra dimension. It's taking a shortcut through an extra dimension. So if you like, it's like traveling from uh, London to, to Australia, but rather than going around the sort of two-dimensional surface of the Earth, you burrow through the center and take, take a shortcut through the Earth's core. It's kind of like that idea. Another possibility is that um, the, the neutrinos are seeing like a different geometry. So the thing that controls the maximum speed is really the geometry of your space-time, okay? So if everything else sees one particular geometry and the neutrino sees another geometry, then the rules of the game for the neutrino are different to the rules of the game for everything else. I'm a little bit skeptical. Uh, I think having, I've, I, but I'm a theorist, <laughs> so I'm very excited, but I think uh, it's time to uh, sit back and look um, a in a lot more detail at their analysis, um, which is kind of out of my league to do that, but I've, I've read the paper, I've listened to the talk, it's clear from reading the paper it's a really difficult experiment. I think the most people's reaction tends to be to dismiss it immediately. Sometimes a bit too readily, I think. Uh, I mean, I, I, I'm a bit different and I'm a sort of eternal optimist. Um, so, you know, the, when these kinds of results come out, I get very excited about it. But uh, you know, as I said, I'm the eternal optimist. I, I always start of every season. I think Liverpool are going to win the league. So it probably says something more about me than uh, <laughs> than about my colleagues. I mean, what, one of the reasons I, is because I don't. If you, you don't only think about the particle physics, if you think about the astrophysics, there are other reasons why you the, you'd have to treat this bit of data at the moment with a degree of skepticism. So in astrophysics, we know about supernovae. Okay, now in 1987 a supernova went off, in fact I was at Fermilab when the supernova went off. Well it had gone off years before but we detected it. We know that with those supernovae neutrinos and light arrived within three hours of each other. Now, and that was, that's perfectly well understood because in a supernova the neutrinos are emitted as soon as the core collapses, so they begin their process, their journey straight away almost. The light doesn't emit until the shock wave is, is bounced and then the light can escape and there's like a three hour difference. And that, assuming they both went at the speed of light, that accounted perfectly for this difference. If this result holds and it, and it holds for all the neutrinos, then we would have expected to see the burst of neutrinos three and a half years earlier because the neutrinos were growing that much faster and there was no evidence of any neutrinos arriving three and a half years earlier. Your non-physicist friends who you might go to the pub with, do they ask you about this one? This is definitely one that's cropped up, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, actually one of, them, one of them told me a joke about it, so uh, I might as well tell that joke. <laughs> so the, the joke is that, that um, the barman goes, oh, we don't serve neutrinos in here, and then a neutrino walks into the bar. So I'm blaming him for that joke, but uh, <laughs> probably, he probably shouldn't give up his day job. <laughs> I don't really believe this thing's a tachyon, and uh, if it turns out it is a tachyon, I'll go back in time and not do this video. So if you're watching this video, that's proof that this thing's not, not a tachyon. <laughs>